Uh, this uh, workshop is organized by the Lincoln University Center of Excellence, Designing Future Productive Landscapes. I am Pablo Gregorini. I'm a professor of life of Lincoln University and the professor of of livestock production, and I'm the head of, of the Center of Excellence, Designing Future Productive Landscape, and the leader of the Lincoln University Pastoral Livestock Production Lab. All this uh, event uh, started, you know, long time ago, almost two years ago, uh, you know, it was supposed to be face-to-face, -face, but thanks to COVID-19, we end up running it online, which has been as successful, if you like, so far, because uh, a lot of people that wouldn't have been able to come to New Zealand uh, were able, are able to tune in through this media. But I need to, or, um, to, to thank and, and quite a lot to my colleagues and team members and friends from the organizing uh, Committee or International Organizing Committee, uh, Fred Provenza, Ian Gordon, and Carol Kerwin. Uh, Fred, Ian, and Carol, uh, thank you very much. Uh, and without you, it would have been impossible. And thank for the support that you have provided to us in this endeavor. And talking about thanking, um, a massive thank you as well to Blink from Lincoln University and the Lincoln University Pastoral Life, the production lab, because uh, they've been helping us, the international committee, to, to all the running behind the scenes and, and putting this together. Without them, it would have been impossible. So thank you very much, Cameron. Thank you very much, Julia. Thank you very much, Anita. And Rui Todi, thank you very much. You've been super. Continue thanking. Um, I'm, I'm happy to say that uh, despite this format from face-to-face -to, -face to online, we, we get a lot of sponsors and they've been fantastic, they've been supportive. And of course we have different categories, but we keep, we keep the support from all of them and we really appreciate their help. So I have to say that um, well, all the speakers have uh, submitted a book chapter to the online and hard copy book chapter uh, that Frontier is editing. Uh, it's um, editing for us. Um, so, uh, it, and that book is also, well, the chapters of those books are open access and they are publishing uh, Frontiers in Sustainable Food Systems, Agroecology and Agroecosystem Services. Uh, because of that tremendous success in, in the speakers submitting the book chapter and the intention of other people participating in the workshop uh, and submitting their opinion in a writing uh, form, if you like, Ian Gordon Ferry Provenza and I have opened uh, a special issue in the sustainability journal. So if you like your voice to be heard, if you like to say something or write something about what you're doing, your research, uh, please let us know the sustainability special issue. Um, it's open for submission till August. And maybe at the end of the day, Ian, that lead that, uh, the edit editor team in, in that uh, journal, uh, sorry, in that special issue may, may have some words about but just to give you an idea, um, this is roughly, I, I had to update uh, this slide, but the total views of the site of our books uh, nowadays is way over 90,000 views. Uh, and we have already 40 articles book chapter accepted. There are uh, three that still need to be submitted and another five that still in the you know, that review is gonna speed up after we finish the workshop. Uh, so we hope that we have this book finished uh, in the next uh, 
two months, and after that, it's going to be wrapped up in an electronic way, and that um, document is going to print up and form a hard copy that is going to be sent to the delegates that have registered to this international workshop. So again, the book is going to be uh, an electronic version. Some of the chapters are online already in the frontiers. Um, it's going to be a hard copy as well that is going to be sent to the delegates that have registered. Roughly by now, we have uh, around 10,000 articles now below. And you can see the demographic of the people that have been looking at our book. Pretty much, we are spread all over the world. Again, don't forget about the sustainability special issue in the um, sustainability journal. So we are accepting articles for the, when you have time to submit an article to us. So we are going to be presenting uh, uh, after this slide uh, the sponsor that who sponsored this session. And we're going to be seeing a video. But this first session is going to be uh, conformed by four uh, streams or breakout room, as we'll see, right? In the stream one, that's going to be shared by me, we are going to have uh, Dr. Roy Vinky. Uh, Dr. Roy Vinky uh, is going to be talking uh, about grazing into the Anthropocene or back to the future. Thank you, Roy, for, for, for joining us. In the stream two, that is going to be chaired by uh, Dr. Vitodi Chakavorti, we are going to have uh, Dr. Carol Kerben. And she's going to be talking about pastoralism, pastoralism at scale on the Kazakh rangeland, from clans to workers to ranchers. Thank you, Carol, for joining us today. The stream two that's going to be chaired by uh, Dr. Anita Fleming. We are going to have uh, Professor Eva Sledge and Dr. Luke Delavi. Eva is going to be talking about managing rangelands without herding insights from Africa and beyond. And Luke is going to be talking about pasture based dairy systems in temperate lowlands, challenges and opportunities for the future. Thank you, Eva, and thank you, Luke. In stream number four, that's going to be chaired by Ian Gordon, we are going to have Dr. Hale. Uh, he's going to be talking about one place doesn't fit all, improving the effective, effectiveness of sustainability standards by accounting for place. What an important thing. So thank you very much, doc, Dr. Hale. Um, so we, uh, we are going to... Uh, Play the video of the first sponsor, the sponsor of this session now, and then we'll let uh, Dr. Emil Murphy, Science and Policy Manager of the Deer Industry in New Zealand, to have some words. So now I'm going to play the video. large-scale commercial farming of deer started in New Zealand and New Zealand remains the world's largest and most advanced deer farming industry. Deer are, however, not native to New Zealand. The first deer were brought to New Zealand from England and Scotland for sport in the mid to late 19th century. They were released mainly in the Southern Alps and foothills. By the middle of the 20th century, feral deer were regarded as a pest because of their impact on the environment and native forests. The export of venison from New Zealand feral deer started in the 1960s, turning a pest into a valuable export. Industry pioneers saw an opportunity to build on this base and in the early 1970s started capturing live deer from the wild and farming them. A new industry was born, farm-raised deer. Today, there are more than 2,000 farms with deer throughout New Zealand. Generally, deer are farmed as part of a diversified livestock portfolio with other species, including sheep and cattle. Reflecting the original imported wild population, 
the majority of New Zealand's deer herd, about 85%, are red deer. The balance of the national herd is predominantly North American elk, also known as wapiti. Crossbreeding between red deer and wapiti is common, especially for commercial venison production. There are also small numbers of fallow deer farmed. Genetic improvements have been made with bloodlines imported from Eastern Europe, the United Kingdom and North America. Cool. Right, so, so thanks Pablo. So like Pablo said, I'm uh, Emil Murphy. I'm the uh, Science and Policy Manager at the Deer Industry New Zealand. Uh, and I guess really first off, just want to express that uh, Deer Industry New Zealand is, is uh, both thankful and quite excited to, to be, be part of the conference or the, the workshops. I think you guys have done uh, really well, uh, put in the mahi, put in the, the hard work to, to, to put on a great program so far. So looking forward to uh, see what else is coming. Um, I really enjoyed listening to uh, Inge, Inge Smirk talking about um, uh, the reindeer, you know, close enough to our interest. Uh, and, and I also worked for a long time up in uh, southern Swedish Lapland uh, with animal welfare. And uh, uh, it, it gave some opportunity for uh, not always comfortable self-reflection, I guess, on, on how we deal with, with challenges. Yeah, um, animal grazing. Uh, and I've, I've found actually a, a lot of these conversations and presentation uh, reminded me of growing up with a, with a dad uh, who was a, a researcher in a ruminant nutrition and agronomist, uh, which caused me to uh, rebel and ignore plants as much as I could for a long part of my life uh, and then go off to study veterinary science. Uh, but let's talk a little bit about the deer industry. Uh, so deer farming, like you saw in the video in, in New Zealand and, and in the few other parts of the world where it's happening, is, is very much a pastoral industry. And, and when people think about deer uh, and they think about venison or, or deer velvet, uh, they, they think about animals grazing outdoors or they think about game animals. Uh, and, and that's a picture or, or that's, a, that's a context that we think is really important uh, to continue with and to carry on as a legacy, as an industry, that's, that's something that's at the core of uh, how we see our, our, ourselves. So, so it's really for us very much about by caring for the land uh, and caring for, for the people in the industry, uh, will put the industry in a position to, to have a much stronger future uh, and, and continue to, to be relatively uh, successful and, utilizing land but like all farming uh, obviously we got a range of issues facing us both uh, today and, and on the longer term the the here and now stuff the, the biosecurity threats the uh, uh, environmental impact in in the local and in the, in the waterways and uh, erosion that's that's obviously impacting our everyday uh, and, and essentially trying to put out the fires by our feet before we, we look at the, the fire down the road. Uh, but at the same time, it's, it's really important that we, we spend time. It's important for us to, to look at how do, we, do we, how do we prepare the industry for the future? And as an, as a, as an industry, we, we have a long, well, we have a, a, a proportionately long, it's a young industry, so, but we have a proportionately long uh, history of actually using science to make progress. So, so that's where we go when we try to understand the bigger issues, like, like how do we adapt uh, to, uh, to a changing climate? Uh, what will happen to pastures? What will happen to animal diseases that we see in the animals? Um, and also things like how do we meet changing expectations from consumers? Uh, and, and how do we tackle uh, you know, perceptions about farming, uh, about farm systems, and, and, and about animal welfare? Uh, and that's, that's obviously a whole lot of complex problems that require uh, several uh, pieces of work to solve. Um, but, but I guess the focus for us is to try and do that in, a, in an animal-centric way or in a way that, that we can resolve our problems while keeping uh, the deer uh, in focus for role that we do. So, so to us, the, the topic of the, of the workshops, the multiscapes um, or variations over there, 
is it, it captures very neatly where we think the solution to most of our underlying issues will and, and, and can be found. Uh, and I know the comment was made last week uh, that, that you know farming animals in extensive system has its own set of challenges and it's not, you, know, you can't just equate it as a proxy for, uh, for good animal welfare. And, and I think I agree completely with that. Uh, and, and for us as an industry, it's, it's, it's really important to, uh, to ensure that we maintain good animal welfare and good animal husbandry as, as a part of an extensive system. Uh, but at the same time, we, we, we really truly think that, that if, if we're gonna realize both the welfare and the production potential uh, of the animals that we, we farm, uh, we need them to be raised and, and farmed in condition as similar to, to what they're adapted, adapted to live in and grow in. So that's things like uh, understanding how different animals deal with different situations, what phenotypes are, are suited to, to what types of land, uh, what is it uh, that, that influences the grazing behavior and, and the feed choices, uh, you know, uh, which one jumps up on the bale and which one stands and looks the other way. Uh, but it's also how can we use deer in, in, as, a, as a component to complement other species in, in a more balanced or more uh, holistic farming systems. Uh, it's questions like how do we use grazing species to work with, with the natural advantages uh, that we have on, on the area or in the area that we farm. Uh, and also what kind of strategies do we need uh, to keep farming within the natural constraints of, of that locality where, where we're at. So it's, it's, it's very much in, uh, in, in how can we do the farming in a way um, that, that lets, us, lets us continue farming, uh, you know, sustainable or, or uh, whatever term you want to use, but that allows us to, to work in, in tandem with, with the rest of, of the system. And we think that that unlocking the, the answers to these questions, and, and that's a lot of the stuff that, that people around the world in this, in this group uh, is working on, they'll help us create farming systems that are, are better for the animals, but also better for the farmers, and, and at the end also better for the environment. Uh, and to me, that this, is, this brings in a lot of, of that uh, indigenous knowledge and, and, and indigenous approaches that, that Professor Matunga was talking about last week uh, and where it stops being uh, a conceptual idea and becomes an, an operational reality. Uh, and it'll help us move into a place of position where farmers can continue to contribute to the ecosystem, continue to contribute to biodiversity on farms as to do already today but helps, helps put them in a place where they're also recognized for the part they play as, as the caretakers of the land and as caretakers on, on behalf of on the rest of us. Um, or uh, just to, to channel again, Professor Matunga, in, in other words, so uh, manaki whenua, manaki tangata, haere whakamua, uh, which is a Maori for uh, care for the land, care for the people and move forward. So that's all I'm going to say and let you uh, launch into the actual interesting parts of today. Thank you so much, Pebble. Thank you very much, Emil, for your words. Thank you very much for your support. It is fantastic uh, from a university point of view to be working directly with the industry, uh, the dear uh, New Zealand support, for example, two of the PhDs uh, at the Center of Excellence. So um, it, is, it is great to have that direct contact and think of the future together. Mm -hmm.